At what point did people first start thinking that that would be a cool strategy to establish prophetic lineage? And this is a big debate and we don't know. Um, there's certainly people that called themselves Ishmaelites um, that can be found in pre-Islamic records, but do they also call themselves Arabs as well? Um, we don't know. I don't think they do. Um, the, the Quran does mention Ismail in a number of places. And so some people have interpreted that to mean that, you know, Muhammad knew that his community was Ishmaelite and that he was uh, addressing the Ishmaelite people and that those people kind of eventually take the name Arab for themselves. Um, I also don't think that's true just by the way the Quran uses the word Ishmael. This could be another kind of hours conversation to try to resolve that one. Um, but the point is that I think what ends up happening is that the dominant group in early Islam is the Madite people. And then they need to find a prophetic legacy that's genealogical. And so they're the ones that are very interested in connecting Mad to Ishmael. And so then they develop this weird genealogical model to get them there in order to become Ishmaelite. But this is a really tricky issue that you could look at in many different ways. Um, the way I talk about it in my book is the way I still think it is. Um, I think that, and, and I've elaborated in a publication that's forthcoming. It'll probably take a little while to be uh, published, but it's sort of sent away now to the publishers. Um, but I try to talk about the Ishmaelite connection more because I think it's, it's, it's very, um, debatable how you want to interpret that and uh, but the only thing that is definitely clear is that by the early third ninth century um, the association of Ishmael with the first Arab was very well established in Arabic literature now I don't think that a lot of people like 200 years before that in very early Islam were of the same view I think that they developed that view over the first two centuries of Islam, and they didn't come out of pre-Islamic Arabia with that idea, but I said, that's a debate right now. But certainly by like 200 AH, you know, 800 AD, so to speak, um, they, um, uh, Ishmael was considered the father of the Arabs, not Mad, and what they had done was they had connected uh, Mad to Ishmael to kind of make them father and grandfather, so to speak. In the pre-Islamic, in the corpus of pre-Islamic poetry, do we have anything about Arabs being, uh, having any type of prophetic bloodline or genealogy? Yeah, so that's the thing. So in pre-Islamic poetry, you really don't get people using the word Arab to talk about themselves. They talk about Mad and the word Ishmael or various the variations that could be Ishmael. Um, they're not attested in pre-Islamic poetry either. And I think that's a very strong argument that people haven't paid enough attention to, that the name Ishmael is not there in pre-Islamic poetry, but of course it becomes a popular name in the Muslim period. And for me, that the, pop, the rising popularity of Ishmael as a name is clearly an important indicator of when Ishmael was being sort of promoted as a grandfather of the Arab people. So I think that they're probably, but I don't know, were communities of Ishmaelites, that kind of people who thought they were descendants of Ishmael, but I still don't think that our Arabic poets from Central Arabia, who are the members of the tribes that wield the Islamic conquest, I don't think that they are totally aware of that. But this is a very debatable topic. Okay. And how did Qatan come into the picture? Um, maybe